Good afternoon, YouTube, and welcome back once again to Fat Cat Collections. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys another smart uh, Android product for your car, and that is the Car Multimedia Player Slash um, Mirror. And basically, it's a mirror for your car. It's uh, It does several different things. We're going to talk about all those things. And I'm going to talk about the good and the bad, and why, uh, why you might buy this, and why maybe you shouldn't buy this. So what this is, is a clip-on mirror. Uh, it's an LCD screen, and this basically clips over your existing mirror. Uh, keep in mind, you will lose the ability to see out of your mirror because you are covering it, but this does have sort of a reflective quality and a kind of a, a, a uh, hibernate button almost on the bottom. If you press that, it'll kill the screen. Um, you have to check for legalities and, and your local laws. I, I can almost guarantee that most states, uh, something like this is gonna be illegal. Whether or not the cops make a big issue of this, really, really up to the cop, right? So, I mean, use this at your own risk, of course, is what I'm saying. Uh, I will. <laughs> so, uh, so like I said, basically clips on your existing mirror, and you do have a split screen on this. And this allows you to see using the front-facing camera and be recording on board with the included 64 gig micro SD card. And it comes with a rear-facing camera that will kind of uh, take the place of the, the reflective properties of the mirror, right? Um, I don't really, let me just get right into the box real quick here. I don't really like the camera they gave you. Uh, and I'm going to show you that box, you know, nothing really to write home about, uh, nor do we care. Uh, we'll crack this open. You get the power supply, which is a cigarette lighter adapter. I'm not going to show you that, you guys. I'm not going to insult your intelligence. Everybody's seen a cigarette lighter adapter. Just plugs into your cigarette lighter, powers the device with a USB-C connection. Um, you could hardwire this in by snipping that off and tapping into a circuit. Uh, just totally up to your skill set. Uh, and you get a 3.5 millimeter audio cable. So if your car has audio in on the stereo, you can pump the audio directly into that, which is what I would recommend. And then of course you have uh, the backup camera. It does have some double stick tape. And this is what the camera looks like. Um, this is kind of the, the thing with this, uh, the one part about this product that I really don't like. This is like, it's like they made a pretty cool mirror uh, with really cool features and then they gave you like the ugliest looking backup camera. Um, and I like to do videos like this because hopefully companies when they send me this stuff, um, they listen to what I have to say and maybe on the next go around or their existing products even, they, they make some changes. Uh, this is something that you could put on your car of course, but you have to really not care about the cosmetics of your car. It looks like a webcam from the 80s, right? An old Logitech or something like that. Is it going to be functional? Absolutely. Plenty of cord. Uh, it's got the backup reverse lead. So basically you'll have a live image of the rear of your car with a split screen on this. And then when you put the car in reverse, you could tap into a reverse uh, backup light with, with this circuit. It'll trigger um, the device or the screen to go into backup mode. And so you'll have some lines pop up, kind of give you, uh, kind of like, I don't know what you'd actually call, kind of like new cars, if they have a backup camera built in from the factory, they have kind of like these navigation lines. So that's pretty cool. Um, I'll probably, if I can replace this, or if I can get really slick about installing this, because I, you know, I do, my vehicles are kind of customized and I, I don't I don't put things on that look aftermarket, right? That, or I shouldn't say aftermarket, that look, like something like this isn't like a cool set of wheels or something. Like this isn't going to look like it came from the factory. So again, it may work for you if you're not really too concerned with that. Absolutely, um, it is functional, right? So that's basically uh, the parts that you get with this. So what does this do? So this does um, a whole bunch of stuff. So again, you have the front-facing camera. And when you pop this over your existing rearview mirror, you have some of these like almost like 80s jelly bracelet type uh, rubber bands. And that basically just clips right over the top of the clip. And you can use the tighter, um, the, the tighter, I guess, section of this if you want to really get this tight on there. Uh, it just depends on the mirror that you have in the car. And these kind of plastic tabs are flexible. Just gotta kind of wrap around the mirror and get a nice fit. Uh, again, on the top you have your micro SD card, and that's gonna be for your onboard recording. This is recording on a loop 24-7 if you wanted to. And of course, your USB-C connection, camera uh, port, and of course, auxiliary out. Um, Depending on your car, you might want to, uh, you know, be a little slick about how you install this. If you care about cosmetics, kind of tuck the power wire up into the highliner around the side of the windshield and down. And you know, you got to be a little creative with this. Um, I always recommend with anything like this, if you really want a clean install, is to, to wire this into a 12 volt circuit on a switch. This way, you have the ability to turn it on or off remotely. Um, again, you can still 
you know, you can still tie this into a switched uh, circuit in your car. It just depends. You know, talk to your car audio dealer, talk to your, you know, your, your local Best Buy, whatever, uh, about different methods for installing this. Um, so when you turn this on, you're going to have a, um, you're, it's not going to go directly into split screen. You're going to have the ability to access Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So I'm not going to, I'm not too familiar with Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. In a nutshell, from my uh, my initial testing on this, when you sync this with a compatible Android phone, and again, I'll put the link in the description, you can read about which version will work. Uh, most Android modern phones are going to work with this. Um, Apple CarPlay, I'm not even going to talk about it. It has it. I can't tell you anything about it because I don't really use Apple products other than for work, and I'm not going to go through the time it takes to set this up and to test it. It's just not, not important to me enough. So um, there are other videos out there, guys, who are very familiar with Apple CarPlay. Um, I'm just going to talk about the, the Android Auto. So what's cool about this, when you sync this up to a compatible Android phone, in my case, I had, uh, when I test this, you're going to have the navigation section on, which will show you real live navigation. So if you're... Well, well, we'll get to who might buy this. Um, and of course you have, like I use YouTube Music a lot of times, you'll have YouTube Music pop up here, or if you open up just a standard media player, if you have songs on your phone, that'll give you a screen right on here showing you, you know, your track list. And the nice thing is, you, it, this is all touch screens. You can press it and advance the track. Basically you have half the screen showing that information, and of course half the screen showing your front facing camera. Um, I didn't play with it too much to see if you could extend uh, Android Auto all the way to the whole mirror. I don't think you can I think you are going to have a split screen on that. Um, you also have the ability to press the button on here. There's a microphone button. I'm going to power this on in a second. And it allows you to access the Google Voice Assistant, which is pretty cool. So if you have a lot of smart home tech hooked up on your phone, your house, you can basically you know, pull up the driveway and say, you know, press that button and say, hey, such and such, we know her name, uh, Google, um, you know, turn on the front door light or, or whatever the case may be. So then all your apps that are normally on your phone, um, I believe will show up on this under the Android Auto. So what I wanna do is real quick, just give you an idea what it looks like. I was gonna grab a power supply. You should use the power supply that came with it, but again, if you are gonna um, you know, wire this into a 12 volt circuit, you'll, you'll be totally fine just doing that uh, without using the cigarette lighter adapter. Uh, boot, boot up time on this is great. Just gonna plug it in right now. And you'll see, this comes up really fast. You do have this kind of cheesy looking, I don't know if that's an infinity or whatnot, or even a car that exists. Um, this is something I, I, I don't think you can change. So it would be nice to have it say like Honda, Toyota, Lexus, Mercedes, but it doesn't. So DVR is, uh, you have several different uh, icons right when you boot up here. DVR, press it, you're recording, and you see, hopefully you can see here, this has gone into full screen mode out the front wit or out the front camera. If we press it again, you can press picture, you can press stop to stop recording, um, and then you can mute it, you know, all the normal things you do with basically a, um, a uh, dash cam. Um, hit the home button, and let me just make sure we don't show anything revealing here. Um, I'm gonna connect to Apple CarPlay. I'm just gonna cover the map section. You guys have all seen what a map looks like. Hang on one second. When it connects to Android Auto, it just starts playing the most recent song I was playing in the car. So bear with me one second. Kind of little things to work out. I wasn't, you know, I'm kind of confused sometimes why it auto plays. I think the reason why is it, it thinks that you're getting in your car and it just kind of starts playing whatever you were listening to. So I was listening to, you know, Simple Man. And then, of course, it has, for some reason, United States Post Office. I was just at the post office. I'm not sure why it's showing that in the drive time. And then you have the icons on the bottom here. Whoops. I keep turning it. I keep killing the screen when I hit that button on the bottom. Uh, I'm just going to press the settings button. Whoops. Uh, notifications. And basically, you have, in the bottom here, you have... A, sorry folks, trying to do this multitask here. I'm just trying to, uh, let me just change the destination here so I can show you. I don't want to give away my information here. And it's cool because you can actually uh, search right from the mirror itself. It's going to search for, let's see here. New Jersey plumbing or something like that. Um, now, we're, so I'm not going to be able to show you this. So I, I'm not going to show you the map because, again, I don't want to reveal my location. But um, let's go into icons. But you can see, hopefully you can see here, 
sorry, the cord's not that long. You can see you got your icons on here and different um, um, apps that would are normally on your phone. So, you know, in a nutshell, I'm not going to, you know, basically with stuff like this, you really have to kind of get it and walk yourself through it. Uh, but this is, again, going to give you Apple CarPlay connectivity, Android Auto connectivity, your DVR function, which I'm going to stop right now because it automatically just starts recording. Um, and then we're just going to go home again. And the other cool thing about this, and, and we're going to talk about, again, some of the things that, and I apologize, this is really scattered. There's a lot of information here, and I don't, I haven't really put this to a really long-term test, but just my initial testing of this, there's things I really like, like the ability, again, to have the Android Auto. I like the ability to, um, you know, have a lot of your apps more towards your eye, um, and because, I mean, let's face it, you know, using your phone to, to play music in your car, uh, it's great to connect it and then have your, if you if you have a newer car, uh, be able to access all that through your dash, which is kind of what a lot of newer cars come with Android Auto. That's kind of the point to get your eyes off the phone and onto something that's that's higher up, more part of your dash system, right? So so let me just let me just cut to why I wanted one of these. So uh, if you've watched my other videos, you know that I my cars are older. I have a Jaguar, I have a uh, Solara, I have a uh, Dodge Ram, and then I have a Honda Accord. All those vehicles have aftermarket stereos in there. They all have Android stereos. So there's really no reason for me or you, in all honesty, if you have an Android deck to get this because you already have Android on there. Android Auto is kind of a scaled down, more auto friendlier version um, for the driver basically. But if you already have Android on your deck, you don't really need Android Auto because it's already on it, okay? So who would get this? So this is gonna be for somebody who basically doesn't have, in my opinion, again, if I misspeak and you, you know, by all means drop a comment, this is really going to be, I'm just going to turn it off for a second here because I'm tired of holding up here. This is really going to be for somebody who, like my Jaguar, has a vehicle that doesn't have the ability to have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, to change out the stereo. If you have an Android deck already, there's really no reason for this, unless you just want it to be redundant and kind of have the cool factor, right? If you're getting it for, you know, the front-facing camera, the rear-facing camera, absolutely, this is a great solution for you without having to stick something on your windshield. Anytime I add something to my car, I don't want it to look like I've, like, it's one thing to add a set of wheels and lower the car and do those kinds of things that look like it might have come from the factory, you know? I, I mean, naturally, you're not going to have a big set of 20-inch wheels or 22s coming from the factory, right? Depending on the car. But for the most part, you know, if you have, like, a wire tucked up into, you know, from your, um, from your, you know, let's say you have a dash cam and you have it kind of in the dash. If you have a wire running down the dashboard, it looks like it's aftermarket, just like a, a, a radar detector. Like it doesn't look like it came from the factory. So I kind of like to install things in a slick way where the technology is there, but it's discreet. So wire management is super important to me. I like, again, that they put these on top. This is going to allow you to kind of use a zip tie, uh, clip them together, and run this right up your highliner. You can also get mirror these little clips. They're like little looms that, that, kind of spread between the uh, the highliner of your car and your existing mirror, and it gives a little channel of plastic that's adjustable, and you can run the wires right through there. And that looks really factory. Some cars even come with the exact same part. My dad's Camry has a uh, compass mirror. He has the exact same part that I have my Solara that I bought for an aftermarket, uh, a different model screen, right, on, on the uh, rear view mirror. Um, so that's pretty cool. They give you lots of length in all the cables, so you're, you're going to have plenty of, whether you cut the um, cigarette lighter adapter off and hardwire, or you just use that, you have a lot of length there, so that's fantastic. I like the ability to uh, tighten up the tension on the clips. That's pretty good, and when I installed this on my Honda, it worked perfectly. Um, I did initially do a video, and that's why I had to record it, or re-record it, because when I put this in the Jaguar, this would not extend far enough to clear the mirror, so the, this screen would have to be offset in order to have the camera functional. When I put it in my Honda, I was surprised it fit. It fit perfectly, but just barely. So again, you might want to measure the measurements are on their website. Measure your existing mirror and measure this. Make sure it's going to fit properly. If you have a Jaguar S-Type, this will not work for you. It's too small. Um, a really simple solution for them on their next model is to just make this extend up to two inches further. That will cover most mirrors in the United States. It's not like the Jaguar S-Type has a huge mirror. It's just you know an extra inch, half inch, it makes all the difference, as we all know, right? 
So anyway, that's just something they can improve upon. Um, other than that, I, I mean, the responsiveness is, is fantastic. A lot of the, even the Android decks that I have in my vehicles that are, you know, should be a lot better. They were a lot more expensive than this, are kind of clunky and they're, 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 the screen's not very responsive. This is very responsive. You touch it, it reacts, uh, which makes it just like your phone. So very usable. Another cool feature with this, um, and one of the main features, kind of a, 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 uh, a cool feature, but then also a little disappointing at the same time, I was hoping that this would be something that had an onboard media player as well. So for those folks who didn't want to use Android Auto, you could put a, you know, they do have the onboard media card already, right? But they would have been nice to have a USB port where you can use a really small USB drive to have your music on there and use this as a MP3 player as well. And then you can hardwire this directly into your car uh, if you have audio input. Or it would have been nice to have it linked with Bluetooth, right? But here's the thing. If you already have, if you have a car that has Bluetooth, you probably have the ability to plug a USB stick right into your car already. So, so let's, again, I'm, this is, every situation is going to be different. Let's talk about my situation. So in my situation, um, I have to use either CDs in the Jag or I have to use um, an RF modulator. And what an RF modulator is, is basically you plug it into your cigarette lighter, most of them are like this, and you connect your cell phone to the device, and then the device broadcasts the audio uh, out on an unused FM station, and then you tune your radio to that. So it's basically like listening to the radio, but you're the DJ, right? So it's a very easy solution. Is it the best sound quality? Uh, not compared to a CD, not compared to a, a hard, you know, a hard wired system with like a USB port, but it works. It's not bad, right? And it's still pretty clear and still enjoyable. Remember, you know, being like being an audiophile and having like the perfect sound system. When you're driving a car, unless it's a brand new state-of-the-art car that's got noise cancellation, all this technology, and even then I don't find it important. Most of my drive with the windows down, there's road noise, lower cars always have noisier tires. So you have a lot of things going on. The heater, you know, so to me, having the perfect sound quality is not really necessary. I still get a lot of enjoyment just listening to the radio. So this will give you that option. This has a built-in FM modulator. But the downside, it doesn't have a built-in MP3 player. So in order to use this you for music, you have to link it to either an Apple phone or an Android phone. So I would have liked to have seen them put the technology to just plug in your music to it, put the phone in your pocket, and just play everything through here. That would have been fantastic for my case because I want something that's, you know, I don't like having the phone on the dash with like a, any kind of clip. I like all that to look really clean. This would have been a really clean solution to add this just on the mirror, nice neat install, MP3 player built in, and then have this broadcast through FM through the radio in the car. Now, um, you, I don't think you can link this, uh, well, like a phone to this, to Bluetooth adapter. This has the FM modulator built in, which is a great feature. So again, it would be nice to have the MP3 player built in and disregard the phone, but in my case, how would I use it? So this would be installed in the Jaguar. The phone would be connected to this with Android Audio. I'd play the track. Um, either pre by pressing play on the phone to start off with. And then once it's connected to Android Auto, you can cycle through and advance the track on here. Then this is going to take that audio signal and broadcast it to one of the FM stations you'll select. You'll just basically tune your radio and find one that's unused and then tune this to that particular station. Now, full disclosure, the, kind of my disappointment here, and I will come back and retest and drop a comment at a later date because uh, the Jag is put away for, this, for the winter. Um, this thing got a lot of static to it, and I have a very inexpensive $10 RF modulator I've been using uh, with my phone to play audio through the uh, radio station to an un unused station. This I was expecting being up so high, being close to the antenna, that it would sound crystal clear, and I got a lot of static, and I tried multiple stations. So I'm not sure if I'm just picking up interference in the garage, but this was the only device that did that. My other RF modulators didn't do that. So to the company, either I got a bad one or they're, they're not broadcasting with enough power or the antenna they've used in this to broadcast that FM signal is either non-existent or extremely small. No excuse for it. If you can have a little device the size of a half dollar broadcasting well, pretty, pretty decent in the car, then this should be a no-brainer. This should add a huge antenna in it to really broadcast that FM that FM music or that on that F, unused FM station, so that you you, you have the best op, the best possibility of picking up nice clear audio. So that's a couple things that really bother me. I like the mirror again, really responsive, a lot of great features. But again, if I would have bought this with my own money specifically for the Jaguar, I would have been sending it back. Why again? 
to, the camera doesn't extend out far enough, which that's going to happen on a lot of vehicles. I didn't try the Solar, I didn't try, uh, you know, the um, the Dodge Ram, but um, I will, you know, at a later date. But just make sure if you're going to buy this, you measure. Um, again, responsiveness, I wish all my other Android decks were this responsive. It's fast, it's quick, boots up fast, it just, it's not clunky at all. But the FM portion of it kind of sucks. I mean, it, it, it was so bad that I won't use it. Even if it's to fit the Jag, I won't use it. And I'll see... That's kind of the main reason why I was attracted to this. But um, again, a couple things for the company to think about. Overall, though, the quality is nice. Um, other than these little things I'm complaining about, this just is not working for my situation. Um, I'm sure there's other options that would work. So hopefully, you know, the company has something else that might work better for me and give me a, give me a solution for, for the Jag. But overall, it's great. So who would buy this? A person who has a car like mine, who doesn't have that new technology in there. If you have an Android deck in your car already, no reason reason to get this other than the fact of having um, a cool screen, front facing camera, rear facing camera, um, you know, it, over your mirror. That, that's pretty cool. That's really in a nutshell. Again, another thing, the boot up screen, they should have made that the ability to select like a, uh, you know, a, a make of a car or something different, your own picture. Um, and maybe it has it on there. I didn't dig too far into this, but I, for my initial testing, I don't think it has that. Um, what else? Did I mention extending this out another two inches? Um, and you know, I'd like to see them give you a different camera. I think with something like this, give you, you know, charge twenty dollars more and give you two cameras. The one they want to give you, like that clunky looking thing, and, and include a license plate cam. And they're like basically a cam built into a license plate bracket. So when you install that, I think it's the cleanest method for installing a camera on an aftermarket on a car that didn't come from the factory with one. Um, Cleaner insulation should be drilling a hole in the car and really hardwiring one in, installing one like that. But I think that's the cleanest option on install without getting too crazy for the average do-it-yourselfer. Um, and it would be nice to include that. It would also have been nice to, um, what else? Uh, again, better antenna for broadcasting the FM. Now, maybe I just got a bad one, not sure, but I'll test it more at a later date. But, I mean, overall, I'm impressed with the quality. It's nice. Um, and I think, you know, I think what would have been cool with this, too, is... It's got the front-facing camera, but I would like to have seen a rear-facing camera inside the car. I know the hardwire thing is cool, but I don't really have a need uh, to have a rear-facing camera other than for the backup purposes. So it would be kind of cool to maybe do, I don't know, something that's more of like more of like how your mirror would act. The camera on the inside here or built into the screen that basically would pop up an image on here like you would have from the camera that they include, but just through your as if you're looking design this in a way that it looks like you're still looking at a real mirror in your car, not a backup cam. You can still have the backup cam, that's cool, but it would have been nice to have included some kind of circuitry where when you put it in reverse, it goes to the backup cam, and then when you put it in regular drive mode, um, and you um, when that circuit's not powered anymore, you have just a standard view of what you normally get out of a mirror. Um, now, for those who still want to utilize the, mirror, the, the reflective properties, you do have a little bit of a uh, glossy finish here, right, which it does kind of act like a mirror. I can tell you kind of a little hack you can use for this. Um, you can get some mirror tint uh, just off Amazon and skin this with some aftermarket mirror tint and that will make it look a lot more like a mirror. It will be more reflective. You will not be able to see it as well. It's going to block during the, uh, the picture during the day. You'll still see it just be dimmer. Crank the brightness up to max. And then if you need to use your mirror real quick, you can just press that button at the bottom and then it'll look like a mirror. At night, you really won't notice it because at night, um, you won't, it won't even look like a mirror anymore with this on. It'll shine right through. So just kind of a, a very simple hack. Uh, I did that on my Solara. I have an aftermarket mirror like this, but it's larger, and it just is a screen. So uh, that's what I did to still allow me to kind of have a mirror in there, but still have the, uh, you know, the, the cool screen on there. It, it, it's really kind of pointless, to be honest with you. It's just for... for cool factor. It's not a screen, right? It's just something to do, honestly. So, but this might go in the Solar. I'm not really sure. Again, it is going to be redundant because I already have an Android deck. And if you have a car from the factory, let's say a more of a modern car that has Android Auto built in, you don't need this. If you have a car from the factory that doesn't have Android Auto, um, you probably, you know, most new cars have a Bluetooth jack or they had they had the ability for you to listen to your songs they have navigation built in so th these things i think are really for folks who don't have modern cars with the newer technology but again everybody's situation is different 
Check it out. Click the link. Let me know if I can help you in any way. I want to thank this company for sending this to me. And before I forget, um, I should probably tell you the name. I know you guys are going to click the link, but let me just log back in here. I keep getting logged out. Um, the company is Podofo, P-O-D-O-F-O, and they make all different kinds of products. Apple CarPlay products, Android Auto, car accessories. So check them out. Let me know what you think. As always, have a fantastic day. Uh, happy holidays and take care.